You know, you just can't wait to get out of it. And then when you do, you sometimes wish. Girls, come over here quickly! Hurry! Dad, stay come here on. for me. Jenny, come leave here. me alone! You come it's here! It's not his father! Get away, didn't you? Leave her alone! Who, are you the one who put her in? Get out of huh? You get away from me! You make me! Get out of my house! Looks like it hurt. I hardly knew what hit me. It's a wonder you didn't get a concussion or glass in your eyes. I'm okay. Mm. Flash, I need a shot of the neck here, okay? I'll get your medical report from the doctor that treats you in the emergency room. Oh, that was Dr. Fields. Thank you. It's my next question. Anything else, Sergeant? Uh, no, that'll be all, Flash. I'll see you later. Thanks for leaving the place uh, untouched since last night. Uh, don't you guys clean it up, too? Sorry. <laughs> Jeff, how can you joke at a time like this? A drunken man breaks into our house, hits you over the head with a vase, and takes his daughter off against her will. Honey, it's all over with. Sergeant Brubaker said that Cavalaris is in custody and Donna's fine. I'm sorry. I know I should be grateful that it wasn't worse, but he could have killed you. Sometimes it takes a little while for the shock to wear off. Uh, I would like to ask you, too, a couple of more questions, if you don't mind. Oh, I'm fine. Come on. You two want to sit down? How long would you say uh, this girl Donna has been with you? About a week. You s and you had no idea that her father objected to her being here? Oh, no. She was supposed to talk to him about it. She came to us with bruises from a beating he'd given her, and she begged us to let her stay, and we couldn't say no. I think she was afraid to tell him where she was. Just because she said that her father gave her the bruises doesn't necessarily make it true. Kids do lie. Oh, she wasn't lying. That's what courts are for. Well, so what's going to happen to this guy now? Well, uh, he's been arrested for intoxication, breaking and entering, and assault and battery. Well, what about Donna? Well, she'll be held by the juvenile court pending a release to a foster home, or she'll go back to her father. But she's afraid of him. Can't she come back here? <laughs> Frankly, Mrs. Cones, I think you're asking for more trouble, but uh, it's up to you. You'll have to talk to the court. Yeah, come on in, Ms. Weaver. Mr. Webster, I trust your information is as earth-shattering as you implied on the phone. I'm sure you'll agree. Hey, sit down. You have proof so soon that Becky's cheating on Russ. Better than that. I already know Russ has cheated on her. Well, I thought that... No. Well, never mind. Mr. Webster, I'm paying you to make yourself clear. My people have been working overtime on this. Now, it's expensive, but rewarding. Mr. Webster. Oh. Russell Weaver and Becky Hewitt are not, I repeat, not legally married. Not married? No need for an annulment or divorce. But I saw their marriage certificate. Which isn't worth the paper it's written on. Now that uh, Justice of the Peace that married him, he let his commission expire. You mean the person who married them? They think they got married, but they didn't. It's as simple as that. Oh, this is better than I'd hoped. Yeah. It cuts way down on paperwork, too. Except for the uh, property settlement, of course. I don't think we'll worry about a stereo and some plastic dishes. A and you're sure about this? Oh, yeah. I checked into it myself. Ms. Weaver, you hired the best. Uh, what about uh, common law marriages in this state? No need to worry. Oh, how nice. Yep. Your son and his uh, <laughs> friend are not legally married. No more, Mr. and Ms. Russell Weaver. Of course, uh, there's nothing to stop them from tying the knot officially, if they want to. Uh, you've done your job well, Mr. Webster. I'll take it from here. Look, if uh, my detective turns up something else, uh, want me to let you know? I think what you've told me is sufficient, but you can leave a message at my hotel. I'll be out of town for a day. <laughs> Thanks for coming, Jason. I guess our talk yesterday didn't have much impact. Oh, don't think that, Jason. I listen. I'm not going to drink on the job anymore. Well, I still have a job. 
you do, but I'm concerned and disappointed. Yeah, not as much as me. I can't believe I did it. You were too drunk to know what you were doing? I remember, I remember, but I, I don't know what got into me, that's all. Yeah, alcohol can make a man do things he wouldn't normally do. Yeah, well, listen, it was just a few drinks to unwind. I wasn't going to get drunk. And then he came home and Donna wasn't there, so I had a couple more. That's so. all. Drinking makes a man's problems worse, Tom. I know, I know. All I've had lately is problems. Donna was the last straw, you know. I got a right to see my daughter, you know. Well, of course you do, but it's how you went about it that was wrong. You don't have a right to break into a man's home. I'm sorry, Jason. I just wasn't thinking straight. I thought I was going to lose Donna. Ah, well, if you hadn't have been drinking, why, the whole thing probably could have been settled peacefully. Maybe, but Donna shouldn't have been there. Well, why was she at the Cummings? It's what I wanted to ask her. I don't know. I know the Cummings. They're nice people. Donna's still my daughter. She stays with me. Well, you got a problem someplace, Dom. You got to find out where it's at. Donna's all I've got left. She needs you too. And so does Prescott Development. Sober. And I made a mess out of everything my whole life. Ah, come on. It's not that bad. Yeah, you're not facing charges or I had your daughter turn her back on you. I mean, what's there to live for, Jason? Plenty if you'll quit looking at life through the bottom of a bottle. I can't do anything right. <sighs> if that were true, you wouldn't be one of my foremen. You can do anything you want to do. No, it's no use. It's no use. No. You can sit here and keep feeling sorry for yourself, or you can do something about it. Yeah, but I don't know if I can. Well, of course you can. Now, look, I want to help you, but only if you're willing to help yourself. Now, you promise me that you'll knock off the booze and get your head straight. I'll check into getting you out of here. Now, what do you say? Okay, boss, you got a deal. Yes, Mrs. Cummings, I have a two o'clock. All right, see you then. Come in. Jill, what a pleasant surprise. I was on my way to the bookstore and I thought I'd drop by and see you. I was just talking to Mrs. Cummings. She told me what happened last night. Are you all right? Yeah, it wasn't as if he hit me or anything like that. Well, his actions were totally out of order. Were they? Of course. Misunderstandings should be handled with words, not with violence. Like we're trying to do with our misunderstandings. Yes, and we're making progress. Are we? I thought so. Is anything wrong, Jill? I didn't sleep much after Mr. Cavalleris busted in and took Donna. It wasn't the violence. I just kept thinking about why he did it. Well, Mrs. Cummings said he was drunk and he wanted Donna back home. Exactly. Well, he loves her. She's his daughter, and he wants her back. Enough to do anything to get her. I see. You spring the news on me that I'm your long-lost daughter and expect everything to be all peachy between us. But when it isn't, you blame me for it. Jill, I can't undo past mistakes. I've asked for your forgiveness and a chance to... to make it right. In 18 years, you haven't even tried to see me let alone take me back. I wanted to. You'll never know how much. But I gave Rosemary my word when they adopted you. And I didn't think it was fair to, to intrude on the life they had made for you. Fair? Was it fair to Donna when her father forced her to go back because he loved her? You didn't even try. I didn't know how bad your life was. I thought you were happy. You didn't see me until I walked into this office and didn't want to. That's not true. I held you once, Jill. The day after you were born. <laughs> you were so tiny, so beautiful. But I knew then that I could never let you go twice. I could never stand that hurt again. So out of sight, out of mind. I've loved you, Jill. You've just got to believe that what I did was what I thought was right. But why? Why didn't you even try? Why? Martin, your secretary said I should come in. Oh, yes, I was expecting you. 
have a seat. Thank you for coming on such short notice. Thank you for the opportunity. The position I wanted to talk to you about uh, is not a permanent full-time opening, oh. but it would be a foot in the uh, door, if you're the right person for the job, which, after seeing you, I'm not so sure. I would hope my educational training, internship, and experience would speak for itself. Not my age or gender, if that's what you're referring to. Well, that's part of it. I uh, want to be a teacher, Mr. Kimball. And I would hope that you wouldn't judge me before you at least give me a hold chance it, to... Hold it, hold it, Mrs. Martin. I, I didn't mean to offend you. Sometimes my honesty can be <clears throat> too blunt, but I don't believe in beating around the bush. It's true, you're... Most of your qualifications are adequate for the position, but there are some qualifications important in respect to this particular position that aren't found in your file. My internship was very successful. Fifth grade at Oak Elementary, very nice, but how do you feel about teaching remedial reading? Fine. At night? Fine. To teenagers? Fine. Who are almost your age with behavioral problems? Fine. In the Chesterfield area? Is this part of the inner city program? Yes, it is. The class is part of the city's summer enrichment program. Yes, I'm interested. The question is, can you handle such a class? Can you reach these kids? Some of these kids are big enough to pick you up and break you in half. I'll do my best. But will your best be good enough. Neither one of us will know that if you don't give me a chance, Mr. Kimball. Each student in a classroom is special, no matter how big or how small. And as a teacher, all I can do is try to reach each student on his own level and try to encourage him to unlock his own potential. That sounds very noble, but no different than the other more experienced teachers who have failed to reach these kids. Well, possibly I could be successful where they failed because of my age. Many times, problem students have a hard time because they reject older authority figures. And I'd be more on their level. I relate well with teenagers. These kids have some rough edges, Mrs. Martin. Mr. Kimball, I see this class as a challenge, not as a disease. I'd like to be considered for the position. And so you will be. But I do have several others to interview for the position yet. We'll be in touch, Mrs. Martin. Thank you, Mr. Kimball. Dominic Cavallaris isn't a model citizen. However, I don't find justification in taking his daughter away from him and giving you custody until she's 18. Now, I could arrange for Donna to stay with you until he's released from jail or if he's sentenced to a term in confinement. I'd just be placed on probation. Wouldn't you say, Your Honor? This is his first major offense. No, but surely the court can't ignore the times he's been involved in barroom brawls, uh, the family squabbles for his wife died, the, the driving under the influence. As I said, he is not the model citizen. But he is Donna's father, and he has his rights. But Donna has her rights, too. We're afraid that he might hurt Donna, especially now that he knows that she wanted to leave him. I mean, look what he did to Jeff, and, and you should see our front door. I, I'm afraid to think what he could do to Donna. See, he has never been officially charged, but Donna's told the Cummins here that her father does beat her. She did have bruises on her face and her arm when she came to us and pleaded to let her stay. I appreciate your concern, but families all go through hard times. Now, these should be personal matters, not legal. But sometimes a court has to step in in order to prevent child abuse. But who is to say that, that Donna didn't do something worthy of chastisement? Well, the chastisement's one thing, beaten's another. Your Honor, Donna wants to stay with us, and we want to help her. You know, Donna is a lot like Jill was, only more open and responsive. And I appreciate everything you've done for Jill, but... Well, just give us the chance to help Donna, then. We want to help Mr. Cavalleras, too, if he'll let us. Our request for custody isn't to punish him or take away his rights. It's to help Donna. We understand the parent-child relationship's a sensitive issue, Your Honor. Don't bend over backwards to give Mr. Cavalleras the benefit of your doubt. Not when the welfare of a young woman's at stake. Now, all we ask, Your Honor, is a chance. That's all we need. Now, maybe that's all... Dominic Cavalleras needs two. 
but not at the expense of his daughter's welfare. Doctor's orders were that Mrs. Mason was to be checked every hour. I understand you were the duty nurse during the overdose. Yes, ma'am. Then it was your responsibility to carry out those orders? According to the chart, at the time the patient was discovered unconscious by a visitor, it had been two hours since you had checked on her earlier, correct? But I can explain. Mr. Owens in 311 had a seizure It doesn't and I... take two hours to handle a seizure. Now, I realize that emergencies do come up and that we were short two nurses yesterday. But what happened to Mrs. Mason shouldn't have happened and wouldn't have happened if she'd received the proper attention. Do you have any idea who gave her the drugs? We're checking on it. Did she have any visitors in her room after one o'clock? Not that I know of. Well, I trust that you will be more responsible in the future. That's all for now. That nurse didn't look too happy. Oh, I had to reprimand her, and I'm afraid I was a little too hard on her. A patient almost died because of her neglect. Still might. Sorry, anybody I know? Miriam Mason. Carpenter's daughter? Oh, that's right. He was in your office the other day when I stopped by. I thought she was getting better. Miriam was doing much better until yesterday afternoon. She took an overdose of pills, and she's in critical condition. Oh, sorry. I talked to her earlier in the day, and she seemed to be getting along just fine. I mean, she was starting to open up about herself, or her family, even laugh. Why did she do it? That's what worries me the most. Oh, I'm sorry. You're here to discuss the nurse's wing, right? Oh, well, business brought me here, but I think you need someone to talk to. That's more important. What's really worrying you? Thank you. I do need someone to talk to. I don't think that Miriam tried to commit suicide. At least not of her own choice. I don't understand. It's complicated. Nancy, my sister, and Miriam have been friends for quite a while. Miriam admitted recently that Nancy encouraged her to take pills and even supplied them for her. You think that Nancy might be responsible for Miriam's overdose? Nancy told me yesterday afternoon she gave Miriam the drugs. But why would she admit to a thing like that if she did it? You don't know my sister. She is full of hatred and bitterness. I have tried to reach her by showing her God's love, but she just laughs in my face. Well, maybe you're too close to her to be objective. If anything, I've been too objective with her. Don't worry. God's love can reach her. It doesn't always seem possible, but don't give up on her. Well, meanwhile, how do I stop her from hurting people? I don't have the answer to that, but we can continue to pray on it. Surprised she made it through the night. Well, Dr. Feldman was surprised to hear of her overdose. He said he didn't detect any suicidal tendencies during their therapy sessions. Terry seemed more upset today than she did yesterday. You know, it is strange. Why did she do it? And where did she get the drugs? I only hope she lives long enough to tell us. Gentlemen, has my daughter's condition improved? There's no change yet. She's still in a coma. But she is holding her own. May I see her? There's really nothing you can do, Mr. Carpenter. She wouldn't even recognize you. I think you need to get some rest. Rest? How can I sleep at a time like this? Well, Dr. Greeley is right. I think you'd... Do yourself and Miriam more good if you'd go home and go to bed. I give you my word I will, but first I want to see my daughter. All right. Five minutes. Thank you.
I'm glad I caught you. I was just closing up. I'm not accustomed to knocking down doors. Jill. I love you. I have come to take you home. Thank you.